Hello and welcome to worship with members of Haywards Heath, Hurstpier Point and Burgess Hill Methodist Churches. We gather together for worship in our own homes on this, the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And part of the inspiration of our worship today is that in Haywards Heath this morning, we will be celebrating a baptism of a young girl who is part of our church family. And so as we begin our worship, let us pray. Gracious God, your Son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of life and the word of your kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your true and living bread, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we sing our opening hymn, In the Wonder of Creation. The words may be unfamiliar, but the tune might be more well known to you as we sing together. So we hear our Bible reading today, which is taken from Matthew's Gospel and chapter 13, verses 
31 to 33, and then 44 to 52. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we sing our next hymn, the Lord of the Dance. He danced in the morning when the world was begun. I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance, dance, for Devil on your back, they buried my body and they thought I'd gone. 
let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations and reflections of all our hearts and minds be guided by you, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. One of the moments when I realised I wasn't much like the other young people I grew up amongst was when I saw how much more I enjoyed taking Scripture Union exams than those others who came to Sunday school with me. I've never really enjoyed exams, but I did used to enjoy preparing for these ones. As we think about our lives of faith and how we nurture new lives of faith, whether in young people or older people, we so often think about how we teach them the facts of the faith. We tell the stories of the Bible and teach what they mean. We might teach them the various creeds that form the bedrock of much Christian faith across the denominations, and none of that is wrong. But I wonder whether it should be only part of the picture. For the problem with this model is that if someone struggles to accept one of the statements, or understands a Bible story differently to the meaning the one the teacher has given, they can be left feeling as though, that, that, as though they don't have a proper Christian faith. It can also put those with the responsibility for teaching under increased pressure to make sure they give the right answer or the right application. So, instead of just thinking about learning and teaching the right answer, may we also embrace the model we see Jesus using in our reading today. The people had come to him, yearning to know what the kingdom of God was all about. However, he doesn't start teaching with statements. Instead, he tells numerous different stories about mustard seeds, yeast, treasure, pearls, nets. At the end of the stories, he doesn't tell them what the point was. Instead, he leaves them hanging. In doing so, he encourages them all to puzzle over it themselves. Maybe they chatted about it with others on the walk back home. They would all have brought their own ideas their own questions, their own experience. Maybe there was a baker in that crowd who had a particular point of view on yeast, or a fisherman who could offer something different to the teaching on the net and the fish. Jesus doesn't seem to be concerned with them coming up with the right answer. Maybe the truth goes far deeper than that. As we seek to grow in faith, maybe it needs to go beyond knowledge and being able to recite, though there is a place for both of those things. Maybe we need to become disciples more willing to ask questions, to bring our own perspectives, to share struggles and doubts. As we seek to nurture others in faith, may we not seek just to impart our knowledge and may we not shy away from nurturing others because we fear we don't have all the right answers. Instead, may we encourage them to be people who explore and question. May we be willing to learn from their ex understanding and different perspective, for we are all learners together. All of this leads to a, di a discipleship and Christian faith that is less clear-cut. There aren't the easy, simple answers to all life's questions. We won't all agree on how we interpret things, and all of that is okay. For these stories of Jesus, and the way he told them and left them, point to the reality that the kingdom of God is far beyond simple statements and easy answers. Instead, it is something to be grappled with and pondered over. It is something to which we can all bring our ideas and perspectives, whoever we are. In that whole process of questioning, learning and reflecting, on our own and together, we discover something of the life 
and kingdom of God right here in our midst, far richer than any simple statement or exam answer. Amen. In a moment we'll come to pray for God's church and world, but first we sing once more the hymn Be Thou My Vision.
And so as we come to our prayers of intercession, the response for this week is when I say the words, God of love, I invite you to join in the response, hear our prayer. God of love, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all who are taking steps on their journey of faith. Those being baptised or confirmed today. Those who in the quietness of their own heart may offer their first prayer to you. Strengthen them on their journey. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for all in our churches who seek to nurture faith in others, whether young or old. Give them wisdom and openness. May they enable all they encounter to ask and reflect on the questions of faith without feeling they have to come up with answers. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have felt put off from church and from you because they were made to feel as though they didn't have the correct faith. Restore in them that assurance of your love and may we all be open to learning from those who are different. God of love, hear our prayer. We bring before you all who are struggling with faith and with you because of personal circumstance, whether grief, sickness, pain, anxiety, the loss of a job. May they discover you as their companion on even the hardest roads. God of love, hear our prayer. We thank you for all who have gone before us, showing us how precious a relationship with you is. Bring us with them to your heavenly kingdom. All this we pray through Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Our final hymn has been chosen by the family of the young person being baptised today at Hayward's Heath. I hope as you sing it, it puts a smile on your face as we sing You Shall Go Out With Joy. Shall clap, 
And so may you go from here seeking to learn and to grow in your faith. And may you go with the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, this day and for evermore. Amen. <laughs>